Hello everyone, Trophy Hunter here, and today I have a tutorial on collisions for Fallout 4 uh, weapon models. So, let's dive right in. Alright, so, need to have 3DS Max 2013 64-bit because of the Bethesda BGS uh, exporter uh, scripts and such. They require this exact version of max it you might be able to get it to work in 14 i didn't so i got 13. other things that you will need nif scope obviously the bethesda get creation kit for fallout 4 uh, elric comes with the creation kit it's uh, just a tool to convert it converts assets um, it optimizes them basically uh, but for our case it changes the collisions from like Skyrim collisions to 100% havoc based binary data which is what Fallout 4 uses in the NIF files so this this is what that does uh, again it comes with the GEC so you won't need to find it it's going to be inside you go to your Fallout 4 directory and if you install the creation kit it should automatically put it in here it's under tools and then Elric, and I create two folders in in here. Uh, one I just call it meshes, and then meshes underscore converted. Obviously, the converted being the ones that run through Elric meshes. I these are the ones I export directly from 3ds Max. All right, so today I'm going to show you step by step on how to create a collision for a certain uh, mesh you may have for a weapon or static object maybe even or uh, maybe a dynamic object that say you shoot with something and it you know goes flying something uh, of that nature so I already did this one I'm not gonna export this that would be a uh, I'll just get rid of this hide that alright so we'll do one that I haven't done yet so it's productive for me so for this, we're going to need to use multiple uh, collision objects. You want to use 3ds Max primitives when you create the collisions, like you want to use boxes, cylinders, uh, you can use uh, spheres as well. Just try to use as little loops as you can, like uh, if you make a cylinder, you're going to want to make the, the sides as few as possible, like 12 is okay. I mean. If you want to do 18, that's fine, but you really don't need to. So, for the stock, honestly, what we can do is just go with a box for the top part here. So, I'll start off with a box. And because of my weapon's slightly offset center orientation, it center for this collision box would be... 0 0.056 centimeters. I use centimeters because, because you know, America isn't the rest of the world. So, all right. At this point, where you put it, just want to try to get it in the center, and in the z-axis, this is where you can uh, position it. So, I'd I'd put it right about there. When I've noticed when I, like when I export primitives, they seem to shrink slightly. So kind of make them slightly larger, like stick out slightly from the object. And then of course like the width just make it a little wider. And the height we can obviously bring this down to like right there. And now the length we can stretch it out. Pull it back a little bit. Make it a little longer. If you hold Alt and drag, it drags slower, so it's much easier to control. So that seems like it's a good first box. And you can use as many boxes and cylinders and things as you want. You know, just keep in mind that it might slow down performance ever so slightly, but I personally haven't noticed any uh, change if you use even like a convex hull. Also forgot to mention that you will need the Havoc Content Tools 2014 on your system. If you do not have those, either PM me or I will 
link you to one place I know that he's uploaded them to. If yeah, if his uploads down, then uh just PM me and I will upload it for ya. But yeah, that is a must. And I'm assuming that you have some like, you know, basic 3DS Max knowledge. Alright, so let's uh duplicate this box, hold shift, and we can drag create another one. And that should be fine. So now what you have to do is essentially... I find it faster if you have multiple objects to just make one of them an editable poly and then attach all the other objects. Makes it super quick. Because now everything's an editable poly. And you can also reset your transforms, which is important in something you have to do, or the, the X forms. So effect pivot only tick that it's under the hierarchy tab and just right click all of the arrows in the bottom corner and that just instantly zeroes out the pivot go up to the little hammer icon reset X form reset selected and you get this gizmo open this up click the center and just do the same thing you did with the pivot it's just re zero it collapse it hit yes and this should be good. I'm just going to check one more time just to make sure. Yep, it is good. So now we can continue. And I'm going to break. Since we have all boxes, this is going to be very light. So select element mode. And then click one of the boxes and just then detach all of the other boxes or whatever objects you have. Okay. And now what you want to do is select your mesh. And go up to the animation tab here. Click parameter editor or alt plus one. You get this. Float, you want to change the parameter type to string and then type capital P lowercase r n and then you just click the little add button and now you get this little extra custom attributes text field hold down shift and type weapon alright save it again and now go to the material editor and you're going to want to set up a BS Lighting FX Shader. You don't have to do anything other than choose it. Like, you're going to have this. this is what you're going to see. Just uh, click this button that says Standard. It's going to open this up. Double click BS Lighting FX right here. Assuming that you've installed the Bethesda plugins and such for 3ds Max. You should have these. And it basically will turn into this. And you don't have to do anything. I already have all these set up. So, assign material to selection. Make sure just your uh, normal mesh that you're creating the collision for is selected and just click that. 
and it's going to apply it. It's going to turn it. Should look white. And now, select one of your boxes and click the select and link button up here. And now just hit H on your keyboard. It's going to bring up the select parent box here. Make sure you select your original mesh from your weapon or whatever you're trying to create a collision for and just click link and do that for every single box or whatever collision object you have. Make sure they're all linked to that one mesh. Just gonna do it. You can do it a couple times, it's fine. And to make sure that they are linked without uh, selecting link selected, just go back to select object mode, hit H, and then you go to display, and then display children, and you should have this hierarchy where your mesh is on top and then all of the collision objects are children. So this is good. Now that that's all done, hit control all. Go to have it content tools up at the top, physics. Create rigid body with proxies. I've gotten this to work pretty well. Um, I don't know how well compound rigid body would work, but this seems to work for me. Okay. Now what it's going to do is apply a shape modifier to every single collision object. Obviously we're going to change all these to box shape types, because they're of course boxes. Now with that all done, it's like back to our original mesh here. And uh, for this, I'm going to probably make this, uh, remember this mass here is in kilograms. So I'm going to make this uh, 1.36 because my receiver is about, I think I made it like 1.3 as well. And then all the other parts, I gave them a little bit lower values like 0.6, 0.4s. And for like the friction and restitution stuff, uh, I just leave it. I haven't messed with it. Uh, if anyone has any better settings, please let me know. I will use those. But for right now, uh, click override com center of mass. You want to change this if your mesh is obviously not in the center area here, the center of the grid. And just tick all these other options here. Quality type moving. Uh, deactivator, I choose never. And now we want to change the center of mass. Slide this forward. I tensor because it gives you a nice big box of where your mass is. So I have to change this to 0 0.056 to be center. Looks like I can come back a little bit in the Y. Let's go back right about there. It's about center. Go down a little bit in the, the Z here. It's right about there. That looks good to me. All right. Now, uh, once again, select one of your collision boxes, and under the Utilities tab again, go to More, Collision Group, tick Custom Material, and load the Creation Kit up with the Fallout 4 ESM. And under the Special Effects tab, open up Material Type tab. And these are the actual names of all the materials that you can assign to your collision to give it the proper sounds when you throw it around in the ground and stuff. I was having the problem where I was assigning it uh, through this material uh, selection here, and they actually changed all the names of everything. So none of these work, which is really annoying. So choose custom material, and then of course, uh, for me, I'm using weapon rifle. Just control, just control C that, and then paste it in. 
object type, I'm choosing weapon. And once you have that all set up, just hit apply to selected and just do it to all your other meshes, all your other collision meshes. All right, now select your original mesh again, and now it's export. Export selected, you just have to select the one mesh. And now I'm exporting it to my meshes folder under the Elric directory. So I'm going to call this uh, MP41 stock. Underst uh, underscore call collision. And for exporting, I use PE weapon script and hit OK. And that should be good. Alright, so back to Elric. We just have to choose uh, convert files. If you want, you can uh, you can use a filter script, but for like your optimization options, use these options. You can pause the video and uh, make sure you have the same ones. But these seem to work just fine. Convert files, and of course choose the mesh. Looks like it ran, so that's good. And now in here, you see nothing because the uh, mesh has been blacked out, but there it is. And here's our physics system. This is uh, the data that we want. So, go over to my uh, actual game meshes. And we're going to go MP41 stock. Open this bad boy up, block, copy, branch, block, paste that end, and then select the uh, branch above it, just choose copy, block, paste, and under the data, choose this number, or type this number in that you have the physics system associated with, so in our case it's 6, and it links it up to that. Go up to your hierarchy that you want, then the collision to actually be a part of, so in my case it's this knee node, and you want to just go 7, because that's the number. And now it's all linked up. That's literally it. I mean, it's not super complicated. Just, just then go File, Save, and that's it. Now let's test it out and follow up. Get up. Let's see if this is going to react the way I want it to. So that's good. You can see it's hitting the uh, couch there. Just put that back down. And every, I believe everything on this gun is. Uh, Collisioned. Let's see magazine. Yep. Trigger guards working. All right. That seems to be working pretty well. So that's so that's how you create collisions for uh, weapons in Fallout 4 with proper weapon assigned materials or just assigned materials in general. All right, thank you guys for watching and I hope that you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.